talk to me about where you do see the value? Is it more areas that are immune then from a NAFTA disintegration? No, actually, we are we uh, sold out of almost anything in Mexico around mm. two years ago. We have not been in Mexico uh, for some years investing precisely because we see a, a big a big risk uh, there. You know, Mexico. The estimation is that if um, NAFTA gets uh, pulled out, Mexico loses one million jobs. Mexico loses big part of the manufacturing economy. So it's going to be trickle down into the whole country and not just a sector by sector specific. It's probably a country that's going to go through a necessary transition and it's going to hurt quite a lot. You know, po politically you have elections there next year. So, so Juan, this is, this is all very interesting. It's nice to have a nice negotiation and they have, they're far apart and things like that. Times are wasting. You've got an election coming in Mexico. There's off your elections here in the United States. It's a little like Brexit. I mean, we don't have forever to get this straightened out. At what point does this start to actually affect who is the next leader of Mexico? I think it's already affecting now. You know, in, in South America in general, you have uh, a mixed relationship with the United States. You know, Mexicans are already feeling that the U.S. is not a partner, that it's not somebody you can count on. Uh, in addition to all the, the public spots between the, the president, it's definitely, you know, you are turning from a partner to probably an enemy of the United States um, at south of the border. Luckily for you, the Canadians are nicer people, but it's also happening on, the, on <laughs> they that are, side. They are nice people. So imagine a United States uh, surrounded by Canada, which you got out of the pact, Mexico, which you upset, uh, Cuba, Venezuela, which you are in sanctions, maybe war with. It's not a nice neighborhood that Trump is creating around here. If investors like you have basically gotten out of Mexico because of the concerns here, might it create an opportunity? If this thing comes back around, the United States actually moves toward Mexico and Canada, let's say first quarter of 2018, would that create an opportunity for investors in Mexico? Yeah, the problem is that, for example, one of the conditions that Trump uh, put in the negotiations is that any agreement is only a five-year agreement. You can start again the negotiation based on that time frame. So which certainty is that going to, to give you that in one year, in two years, in three years, is not going to start all over again? So even the solution is not a, a great one. It's, it's actually a complicated situation. Cathy, it's very complicated, but the trade this year has been a simple one. Ignore it and buy EM. <laughs> right. Why is that going to change? Um, you know, uh, things don't usually change on valuation, but the valuations in EM are just so stretched on the fixed income side that I, I, there has to be some sort of a correction. And maybe people just didn't believe that NAFTA would really come down to this. Maybe they thought a lot of talk, but not much action. If we actually get action, uh, it could shake up EM. It's always a relative trade with EM, so stretch compared to what? Uh, well, compared to history, compared to ev everything stretched right now. That's, That's the problem, the problem right in now, the fixed yeah? income market, right? Everything stretched. Um, so, but relative to even treasuries now, you don't get enough spread um, to really justify taking that risk. Uh, you know, 10 or 15 basis points and widening in spread and you're better off in a treasury bond. So why would you buy EM now?